You've heard of Copilot and you've heard of Azure. Well, we now have the GitHub Copilot for Azure extension available for VS Code. This extension is designed to help streamline the process of developing for Azure by using at Azure to ask questions about Azure services or get help with tasks related to Azure, all from within VS Code. Let's go ahead and take a look. Before we get started, I want to mention a couple of things at a high level. First, what Azure is. It is Microsoft's cloud platform offering services like computing, storage, networking, and AI to build, deploy, and manage applications globally. To learn more about Azure, if you're new to it, you can visit this site right over here to get started. Now, GitHub Copilot is an AI-powered coding assistant that helps developers by suggesting code, completing functions, and automating repetitive tasks directly in your code editor. And we have plenty of videos on Copilot right on our VS Code YouTube channel. It has this playlist. Now, this video is about the GitHub Copilot for Azure, which allows you to streamline the process of developing for Azure with Copilot, all within VS Code. To get started, you'll want to install this extension, log in, and you will be on your way. Let's turn our attention now to learning Kubernetes. I want to show you something. I can ask a question like, what is AKS? Let me walk through a little bit of what happened here. So the first thing is we took the question and we sent it to the Learn Knowledge Service. Learn actually sent us back a bunch of links and actually sent us content back in addition to the links. You can click this link, come in here and hey, what do you know? There's a question that's basically just what I asked. So these are great. We want to, whenever possible, include references like this and make it easy for you to be able to take the answer, the response that you got, and validate it. And that's really the best way to build trust. We don't have to just take Copilot at its word without being able to validate it. And it's nice to know that there's a path that you can go back to validate the information that you're getting, which is super important. What I got here was a description of AKS, and then you can see there's some links that can be used to follow up for more information. One of the other things that I want to show you, which I think is really helpful here, let's go ahead and start a new chat, is that we have the ability to help out with CLI commands, and it's a bit basic today, but getting much better. So you can see, I can actually get a kubectl command here, and then I can add to this what about in the test01 namespace? So I'm just going to say, I really don't want all namespaces. I'm specifically interested in the test01 namespace. And here we go. So now I get my kubectl command, namespace test01, perfect. Okay, so we've been through the process of using GitHub Copilot for Azure to learn particular topics such as Kubernetes, uh, among some other things. But now I want to get into the deployment side of things. And I'm going to show this in two different ways. I'm not specifying at Azure here. And I'm just going to say, help me create a new Kubernetes deployment. And let's just see what GitHub Copilot does. So it's going to run. It came back and said, hey, here's a proposed directory structure. It's implying that it can create these files for me. So that's pretty helpful. But if I flip this around and let's just do this. So I'm going to ask at Azure, help me create a new Kubernetes deployment. Okay, perfect. So now it's asking, do I want to use AKS? And I'm going to say, yes, I do want to use AKS and it's going to help me create a new Kubernetes. Let's start by creating the cluster. This is a capability that you're only going to see inside this AKS extension right now. And I click create a cluster and let's go back to that same sub that I like to work with. Now I have this ability here where I can create an AKS automatic cluster or a dev test cluster. I can select the resource group, give it a name, select the region, and then I can create this cluster. So it's going to help me down the path. It can also help me deploy an app to this cluster or to another cluster that I have. So that's one of the capabilities we have to facilitate creating a cluster. 
What else can we ask? How about what are the different types of Azure Open AI models available? So here again, it goes out and gets information from Microsoft Learn, which is great. I can see I have several GPT-4 models. There's some GPT-3.5 still left. I know most of those are being phased out. So maybe I don't want a GPT or an open AI model. Let's ask what other models are available besides open AI. This is a pretty short list. Again, sometimes the link is going to be the thing that you want to click in order to go deeper and see some more information. If you're getting answers like this and you're not getting responses like you want, definitely hit that thumbs down button and tell us what you think. So now there's another capability here that's not tied to the learn knowledge service. I'd like to show you by asking where is GPT-4 available? So it's going to go now and this one's going to be a little bit different because we're actually using another service we have. This is going to say, hey, I can do this search, but I need you to pick a subscription to look for where these subscriptions are set. And this is a key capability to keep in mind. If I open this and show all my subscriptions, I think I have about 140 or something. I never work in 99% of these subscriptions. There's only a couple that I typically work in. So what it's saying is I have filtered the list and I'm showing you the two subscriptions that you typically care about right now. That's why it's giving me those two subscriptions to choose from. I mean, I could ask questions about the other subscriptions I have access to, but I'm going to need to be specific. Here I can see that the question is, which subscription do you want to query? And I'm going to answer number one. And it understands the context that I'm looking for the Azure DevTools demo sub. And I don't have to type the whole name out. And you could see that because the sub ID is 2554 and ends in EA. So it picked the right one. So what we're doing now is we are running a query using the AI platform API and finding out my subscription where GPT-40 is available. So now I know the regions where GPT-40 is available for my sub. This is much more specific than anything that Learn can provide. So now we're getting into some of the deeper details. What if I wanted to build a sample application? We have this ability to go look at templates. So if you're familiar with Azure Developer CLI or AZD, there's a site called Awesome AZD. And on that site, there's a lot of templates. There's also an index of the templates available. We can search those templates and get a result like this here. If I want to go see this template, I can click this link. It's going to take me to the GitHub repo and I can come down. I can read some information about it. Often there's an architecture diagram in here that explains what's going on, which is nice. So if I look at this and say, yeah, yeah, that looks great. Then I can just come back here. And if I run this azd init command, so I can insert this into the terminal, it's going to open the terminal. Now what it's going to do is basically git clone this template down. Here it asks me to enter an environment name. Now I can ask to help me deploy the app. And it'll give me steps that I need in addition to the three azd commands. For step three, I can execute AZD up. So it provisions and deploys all resources. I'll select an Azure location when prompted. Then it packages the service web and finishes the process. The next thing I'd like to do is to demo how GitHub Copilot for Azure helps developers obtain information about their Azure resources. So let's pretend I'm making some changes to a front end, which calls an app service API. Now to test my changes though, I need to target a deployment on one of our deployment slots. The problem is I might not remember what slot I need to target or even what the default domain of the slot is. Thankfully, Azure can help me with this within my workflow in VS Code. I'll start by asking at Azure what deployment slots our service even has. 
and I'll be hopeful that when I see what slots we do have, I can remember which one I need to target. Now that I see what slots are available, I remember I wanted to target the pre-prod slot. So now I simply ask at Azure, what is the default domain of the pre-prod slot? Cool. Now that I have the domain, I can edit my code and begin testing my changes. And thanks to Azure, I was able to quickly get the Azure resource information I needed to help me start developing, all without needing to leave VS Code. Next up, I'd like to demo how GitHub Copilot for Azure helps developers learn about Azure. Let's pretend that I work on a product which uses Azure Storage, and I've been asked to switch to using OAuth for accessing file share resources. Now, I remember hearing a few years ago that file shares only partially supported OAuth. So from within my workflow in VS Code, I'd like to understand if this has changed and if so, in what API version. First, I'll show what happens if I simply ask the default Copilot chat experience this question. Now, while it answered it quickly, I could tell you that in reality, the answer is incorrect. This is because the answer is simply based off LLM training data, which could quickly become out of date. Now let's try again using ask at Azure. Now we can get an answer back in essentially the same amount of time and it's going to be correct as well. And that's because Azure augments its answers using information from Microsoft documentation. Thus, by using Azure, I can know that the answers I get to my questions about Azure are going to be more accurate and up to date, which is pretty cool. Next, I am going to be demoing how GitHub Copilot for Azure could help developers investigate the logs of their app. So like, let's say I have a function app that I've told at Azure I'd like to discuss. Today, I'd like to know what are the types of response codes my function app is returning. That way I can have a general idea of how my app is performing. And I could do this by asking at Azure a question like summarize the codes returned by the app. Now Azure is going to connect to my function apps logs and query them for the information that I'm looking for. While my function app is returning 200s, it's also returning a code that I'm not familiar with. And this is what's cool about it. It's literally like asking a mentor. Let's ask Azure, is it normal for a function app to return the second code? Interesting. It sounds like I have to have a chat with whomever is responsible for checking in the use of code 418. Either way, by using at Azure, we were able to quickly query the app's log for information and learn more about how the app log is doing. To learn more about GitHub Copilot for Azure, you can check out these blogs here. And there's also this series that you can check out. I should warn you that it is in light mode, so you may want to put on your sunglasses if you're not used to that. And that's it. If you got some value out of this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. That helps us out with the algorithm. And let me know in the comments if you use Azure and Copilot. And if you do use both, what your thoughts are on this extension and what further advancement you'd like to see with the extension. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.